In the first part of this series, we made a short introduction on inductive kickback and explained it using the voltage equation of an inductor. In the second part, we will try to comprehend and visualize what actually happens inside an inductor in the event of an inductive kickback using the water analogy. To understand this phenomenon easier, I will explain the whole thing in water analogy like I did in my previous video on how transistors work. So again, here I have my circuit, I have my power supply, I have my inductor and not a switch this time but a transistor working as a switch to just what can happen to a transistor in the case of an inductive kickback. and. As my electric circuits, hydraulic counterparts, I have my pump and for an inductor I have a water wheel here and for the switch I have a valve. So okay let's get started. First I will start from my hydraulic circuit. So I start my pump and the water will start to flow in this direction. And what's going to happen when it reaches the water wheel? So, before the water wheel starts to turn, it will show some resistance against the water because it has inertia and we're gonna need a little bit energy to get it moving. So initially it will show some resistance, but then it will start to turn. And my water will keep on flowing. So initially my valve is in open state, so the water will just flow freely from here. And while my hydraulic circuit is in this state, what's going to happen if I just suddenly shut the valve off? When the valve is shut off, the water flow is going to stop all in all of a sudden. But however, I spent some energy to get this wheel moving and the energy will just not disappear into thin air so it was turning and it just suddenly stopped so it's going to push the water here in this segment of my pipe and when it pushes the water here while it stops what's going to happen in this case so in this case i may have two outcomes Sorry. So, outcome one. My valve may not be able to withstand the intense pressure here and it may break. So, when it breaks, the water will just continue to flow without any control. So, you may have already guessed it and this corresponds to arcing in my electrical circuit. And what may be the second outcome in this scenario? My valve may actually withstand the intense pressure here. So what happens if it withstands? If my water wheel has unloaded all of its energy to here and yet my valve withstands, the water will start to flow back in this direction because just like how current flows from high voltage to low voltage, the water will flow from high pressure to low pressure. So it's going to flow in this way and it will turn my wheel in the reverse direction to my original direction. So it's going to flow this way and 
the water will flow back in this direction. However, it's going to flow back in somewhat less of a magnitude because I have spent some of my energy uh, to, to losses like friction and heat. So, what I mean to say is, in here there is less pressure than here. So, if my pump also withstands this pressure, the water will flow back to here and these events will just happen and happen again until all of my energy is dissipated as heat. So my second outcome is it may withstand and voltage, not voltage, voltage will swing. Now I hope that you're able to visualize better what happens in the event of an inductive kickback. In the next video, I will talk about what actually happens in our electrical circuit in the case of an inductive kickback.